that will make you stand before Jesus ultimately and you'll be crying. It's not worth it. Number five, the, the cost of a father. One of the things the devil does to cheat God's people, especially if you're a father, never allow the devil to move you to the point where you curse your children or you put a negative word on your children. Do you understand? I remember um, one of our members here one day relating with her daughter. I said, look at, look at her big head. I can't remember. I don't think it's big head because I called her back and said, reverse what you just said to that child. Because if that child starts manifesting that thing, you and your husband will have lots of money to spend in the hospital. Reverse what you just said to that child. In the way we relate one with another, not only the cost of a father, the cost of those in authority, the cost of authority figures. Am I communicating with you? As a child of God, as a husband to your wife, you must never allow yourself to get to a point where you use negative words on your wife. That you are so useless. If you say she is useless, she will become useless. Say it sufficiently and the power of God will back it up. Because the Bible says that the power of life and death is in the tongue. By divine creation, the tongue is an instrument of power and it's able to bring great things to life. That is the reason why your confession is very important. The Bible says that hold steadfastly to your confession, don't give it up. Okay? It has a great recompense of promise. And it tells you, follow the examples of those who have done the same thing. And after you have done the will of God, you need endurance so that you might inherit the promise. Number six, wrong counsel. Wrong counsel can destroy you. When you read the Bible, you see the book of Kings. Jeroboam took a wrong counsel. Rehoboam also took a wrong counsel. Be careful the people you give the permission to advise you. Know the difference between your friend your pastor and your father, for example, they are separate, they, you know, they are different. Am I communicating with you? You need to be careful. Who is giving you counsel? Who are you taking counsel from? I have also realized that when church members want to get lost, when they make up their mind, they want to get lost, they don't want the truth. They know where to go. I have seen people want to make very serious decisions in their life. Because in their heart, they are set on what they want to do. They want to do what they want to do, but they also need a divine stamp on what they want to do, and they know pastor won't give it. They had had too many of his messages to know what his mind is on that subject. And so they get up and go down to places or to people who have no revelation whatsoever of any kind on that particular issue. Am I communicating with you? Do you understand what I'm saying? For example, you're a single in this church, you want to get married, and I've pastored you for five years, six, seven years. And then you want to get married, and you know, you have this guy, that funny looking guy, does not take God serious, has no balanced doctrine, is coming from, you know, a backside of a church where the doctrines are not correct too. Now you know that immediately it comes, I will ask you, what church does he attend? Why do I ask you that question? I'm asking for who his father is. Because whoever his father is will determine the values he has. If it comes from a church where they don't believe in the second coming of Christ and they believe the Holy Spirit is a wind, it simply means that your house is going to be blown away by a hurricane. Do you understand what I'm saying? Now, so why would you want to do that? Your doctrine is important. Once both of you believe separately, you are in trouble. That's what I tell people, lady women who have attended our church in the past and their husband is going to another church. I say, look, go back and meet your husband in the church he's going because you are going to, I'm going to destroy your home. If I tell you that when or if it's the man alone, bring your wife because you're going to have problem. If I tell you and show you from the scripture that during fast you can make love to your wife and they tell her that making love during fast is a sin. Say you know that the day you want to go on end of the year fasting, that is when the devil will come into your house and enter into your house through fasting into the new year. Am I communicating with you? Do you understand what I'm saying? Very important. So you need to understand that. Wrong counseling will do a lot of havoc. Number seven, or number eight, political ill will and leadership ill will. As God's people, you need to pray for the president, for the leadership of our country. Many of you don't think Nigeria is a serious subject in your prayers. It is. Because if we have wrong leaders, things will go the wrong direction. The Naira has just been devalued. What it means is that you will spend more Naira to get a dollar. Am I communicating with you? We're going to send bulk SMS this past week. And the man who had been giving us very fantastic distance, discount in bulk SMS, he said, Pastor, I'm sorry, bulk SMS is now two naira flat for one. The dollar has gone crazy. That's the decision of somebody. Am I communicating with you? You have leadership that budgets one billion naira on food, budgets 330 something million naira on plates. 
a woman renovate her house with 7.5 billion naira, renovate the house, she didn't build a national stadium, renovate house. That is what you have when your leaders, when your leaders are children. The Bible says that cost is a land. Woe unto you, O land, if your children, if your leaders are children and they feast, your princes feast in the morning. It is children that must eat in the morning. As you grow, your body will tell you, you can't wake up in the morning and be eating a bar, except a bricklayer. You do regular jobs. You get to a point where to aid digestion and allow your system to wake up, you want to eat breakfast around 10 or 11 o'clock. And by 5 o'clock, you are you're probably getting ready to eat dinner. And you know, by 7, the best you can take are food. Now, it's called maturity and growth. Amen? So, I want to encourage you that, please, as we go further towards 2015, let us pray. Let's show concern towards our, not, our country. It is one of the ways the devil has destroyed God's people and kept them captive when he puts wicked leaders over them or he makes the people not to be concerned for the leadership that is ruling over them. They're saying, well, if anybody that wants to be you win, Jerry. And then you collect voter's card so that you can use it as ID card in the bank. That's all. Some of us are wonderful. How can you do that? That's travesty. That's injustice to yourself. Amen? But we don't have sufficient time for that. Okay, the next number, how the devil fell many of God's great people, the absence of choosing God's chosen leadership. Now, that's very essential. It's part of, you know, an, uh, a flow from the last point. We need to pray for God to choose leaders for us. If you don't pray for God to choose leaders for you, if the devil brings people into power, they will hurt us. Am I communicating with you? Very essential. God's chosen leadership is critical. You see, God said to the children of Israel, when they were clamoring for a king like other nations. He says, make for us a king like other nations. God said, I gave you a king in my anger. I took him away in my wrath. Leadership is very important in any sector of life, whether marriage, whether church, whether anything. Now, one of the ways the devil has destroyed many churches in the United States is that they vote people to power who will preach the gospel to them in many churches. There is nothing in the scripture that supports that you can vote and unvote a pastor. Do you understand why? Because the pastor's office is a ministry office, is an ascension gift. And you don't become a pastor because you went to a Bible school. If you go to a Bible school, the purpose is to acquire knowledge. It does not make you, it does not confer a call of God upon your life. Do you understand what I'm saying? We have seen people press beyond the accepted or the, their God-given gift into offices that God did not give to them and it has destroyed a lot of people. There are people in the pulpit today that the reason every, most people are in trouble is because that man is behind the pulpit. He has no business being there. He's giving false promises. He's giving false hope to people. He's giving wrong prophecies to people and people's homes are being destroyed. Why? Because a man told a woman that your husband is sleeping around and the husband is a godly man that is simply stuck in the office. Am I communicating with you? Do you understand me? Of recent, you know, very precious person to us, one of us, you know, just not in the church here, you know, a friend. Just his wife was told somewhere where she went to pray. This is also the problem when you are going from places to places to places to be taking prayers from different people who you don't even know their life in the secret. What empowers the life of a pulpit of a pulpiteer is what he does in the secret place. Do you understand? It's an abomination for a pulpit here to bring a message without labor. It's a sin for a pastor to stand to preach to the people when he did not prepare a message or pray over the message he's bringing to them. Because his message is a vehicle of the spirit with, through which God does uses, uh, uses that message as a singular tool of doing multidimensional surgeries in the heart of men. One message will fix a doctor, an engineer, a politician. One message. The Holy Spirit takes that same message and does something different in your heart and does something different in your heart and does something different in your heart. And so the pastor must have done a good job in the place of prayer. 